13 love, 13 knowledge, 13 wisdom, 13 respect. This is your creation 13. Um, today I'm going to be sharing a presentation talking about the personal experience um, with discovering about the spiritual realm, discovering about, um, just like with me, born and raised in a Christian home, discovering Christ, um, discovering these angels or these deities that help us and aid us um, through our life through our life right you know that that voice that tells us um, or uh, helps us um, or guides us through life right you know it's so very important to to have that that uh, information on the go to's and the how to's um, as we journey into life but a lot of times it gets lost and people get so confused and uh, scared to listen to that hidden voice, right? To listen to that voice that you can only hear. That's helping you, that's guiding you, that's uh, giving you information um, in the spiritual realm. Hidden knowledge and truth um, that just seems to come to you, right? You know, New Age term, they call it downloads. Um, uh the religious term would be um, the Holy Spirit speaking to you, right? Uh, it's all the same thing, and it's understanding to break out of the selectiveness of things and get to the root of it, right? Because whether it was New Age or religion, Holy Spirit or downloads, higher selves, uh, it's a deity that's helping you and guiding you through life. Right, and I'm talking about the one that actually helps you, not the one that discourages you. Right, you know, those would be the lower level spirits, and that's where you know they tempt you or persuade you. That's where you go, like what Christ said, Satan, get behind me, stay behind me. I don't need you to be uh, running my life. You know, and that's huge. That's definitely another video. Um, but this presentation, let me go ahead and switch my screen here is going to be about the personal experience and the importance of it is huge um, having your personal experiences is going to help you mature and develop your life in a way um, that you can help others but we get so dragged down with selectiveness and trying to fit into the world right um, that we lose the very nature and uh, intuitiveness something like that uh, being in tune with the spirit being in tune with um, Christ being in tune with the Holy Spirit if you want to call it that being in tune with that on a personal level right what does that look like because if all you're doing is reading and not experiencing then what is going on what is the whole point and purpose of religion and was the whole point and purpose of spiritual exploration and the development behind it and what was Christ talking about on on um, don't follow the ways of the world the world will deceive you um, follow me and you will experience the kingdom of heaven. You'll have the key to the kingdom of heaven. Things of that nature, right? And you don't, how does that look? It's going to be the personal experience, the personal journey. Um, I have talked to so many and just seen so many Christians and just in the religious realm tell people that your personal experience will um, confuse you, will distort you, it's not the way, um, the things of that nature. It really destroys the growth and development of you and the maturity level that you gain through it, right? Maturity is key. Without maturity, we don't learn in life, right? And it's not self-gain. It's not book knowledge. 
maturity comes from the exploration and experiences of life through hardships, through challenges, through success, through friendship, and um, you know things of that nature. We mature and learn from it, and then we can help others who are going through it. It's huge. So I'm going to go ahead and get this presentation started because it's going to be a little long. So the personal experience. Religious and spiritual teachers have been building churches and groups centered around dishonest, greed, and lustful foundations. This has been repeated and represented for 2,000 years in secret and the past 60 plus years this has been made public knowledge. Now being public knowledge churches and spiritual groups are now in a state of confusion, disorder, lawlessness, and morally disgraceful to children and teenagers. And if you've studied what's happening with with religious uh, teachers and leaders um, and spiritual teachers and leaders, there's a lot of dishonesty and a lot of inappropriate behavior with these leaders. So there's a lot of uh, confusion and, like I said, morally disgraceful things that are happening. And our children who turn into teenagers or turn into adults are going to be going to leaders like this. And it's our job to make them aware of what's going on and the personal experience is what matters. Not these leaders and teachers they're teaching you because you are your own leader and teacher and that's huge but there's also the the term of honoring and finding those honorable and trustworthy um, leaders and teachers that can help you through life that don't have any personal gain at the end of the day all right um, so we will continue on oh man I forgot to let me get this real quick here. Probably don't have this up here. Here we go. All right, so this is in First John 2. There we go. I forgot to put that on there. So, First John 2. My little children, these things I write unto you that you sin not. And if any person sins, we have an advocate with God and Christ the righteous. And, and those who are in preparation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do not know that we know the Creator and Christ if we keep his commandments um, and to make a note of this you know sin is in term darkness stuff that is hidden um, stuff that is dishonorable right morally disgraceful um, he or people that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him those who just don't morally uh, want to keep commandments in general, right? But uh, whosoever keepeth the words in Christ fairly is the love of the Creator perfected. Hereby know we that we are in in the kingdom of creation, right? You know, Christ says the kingdom of heaven is within us. We are in him or we are in the kingdom he that saith abide in Christ ought himself also so to walk even as he walked so we rock just as Christ walked right you know um, Christ was a leader unlike anything else um, but Christ also taught us uh, to not follow the ways of the world but to follow the Creator within the personal experience and encounter Religious leaders always seem to to overlook Christ's teachings in that manner. Is what did Christ do 
at the end of the day. Um, my brothers and sisters, I write no new commandments unto you, but an old commandment, this is interesting, which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Right? Um, and that's very interesting, right? You know, the old command bit was the tree of knowledge of, or the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and the tree of life, right? You go by the old commandments, right? You want to go by the way of life. Um, the knowledge of good and evil, you also have to have, though, right? Because uh, good and evil is part of the ways of the world. So it's very interesting to look at that because, uh, you know, you learn good and evil based upon the world. And then you learn about life, which is beyond the world, right? So that would be the hidden mysteries behind what that means, right? Is you want to learn about the tree of life and not the tree of good and evil because that is part of the world. Very interesting. So that's the old commandments talked about right there. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in Christ and in you, because the darkness or sin is past, and the true light now shines. Uh, those that saith uh, Christ is the light and hates others is in darkness even until now, right? Um, and that goes back into the good and evil element. Um, selective nature of things is huge. Um, is if you're selecting one way and you don't understand the other way, you're still balancing in the realm of good and evil. That's why it says right here, you know, follow the old commandments, right? And that is very, very interesting. He that saith he is in the light and hates his brothers is in darkness even until now. He that loves others abides in the light and there is none occasion of stumbling within the Creator. But he that hates others is in darkness and walks in darkness and knows not whether they're, they're going to and, th and throw. Because that darkness has blinded their eyes. I write unto you, little children. This is huge. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven. You for his name's sake. Right? What should be Christ. I write unto you, um, parents, not fathers, but parents, a mother and father, because you have known Christ from the beginning. That means when you were in your mother's womb, you knew of the Creator. I write unto you young, young men and women, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Creator. Again, you have known the Creator before you were in the mother's womb. This is huge stuff. This is beautiful stuff. I have written unto you, mothers and fathers, because you have known the Creator that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men and women, because you are strong, and the word of, cre of the Creator abides within you, and you have overcome the wicked one. It's weird how it just repeats itself, but it's it's key. Love not the world. Again, the two trees. Love not the world, the knowledge of good and evil. Neither the things that are in the world. If any person love the world, the love of the Creator is not in him. And this goes back to the religious leaders and teachers. Because they love tradition. They love the church. They love the Bible. Right? They love the things of the world. But they are eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. 
the ways of the world. They're not sharing the tree of life, the personal experiences, which is what Christ is talking about. Um, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Creator, but is of the world. And the world pass, passes away, and the lust therefore. But those that doeth the will of the Creator abides and lives forever. The tree of life. Little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard, um, that Antichrist shall come, or the leaders and teachers that teach you the knowledge of good and evil. Even now are there many antichrists whereby we know that is is the end of an age, the last time or an end of an age. And that's huge. So the term antichrist is those who eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the ways of the world. This is huge, and not very, very many people are going to understand what that means. They want us, they went out from us, but they were not of us. They have descended down from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out, they descended out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. This is multidimensional talking about the souls who were ascended and then those who have descended into this realm. They had the tree of life and they descended down. They became lustful of this world and they became greedy um, in this world of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They got stuck in it and now they follow the ways of the world and that's the biggest problem with religion and the new age is that they have forgotten that they were with the creator and with um, the hierarchy in the ascended realms when they descended into their mother's womb and birthed out into this realm. Very deep stuff, very deep stuff. But at the end of the day, the scripture is really a message to the children uh, that are birthed here. Um, and we're helping them to remember when they came to this realm to not follow the ways of the world. And as young parents, a mother and father, it is our job to teach these souls, these spirits that are coming to this world, to not follow the ways of the world. Right? Beautiful stuff, man. Um, and then we continue, right? Yep. So we'll continue on. Who is a liar but those that deny the Christ? Right? Um, and Christ is the anointing, and Christ is those who are pure from the womb and then are born into this world. The Creator, um, let's see, who is a liar but those that deny the Christ is the Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. This gets used and this is where a lot of uh, religious leaders twist things because they're like, if you deny the name Jesus Christ, you're an antichrist. Well, those are just words. Those are just spoken words. Let's get deeper into this stuff. If you're not willing to think for yourself, if you're not willing to ask questions, then what are these religious teachers and spiritual people building? Right? But this more goes towards religion because it talks about Christ and the Father and Son. If these spiritual teachers and leaders do not allow people to speak, then what are they doing on that pedestal? What are they doing teaching? What are they teaching? Right? Because it's not just words that 
create the relationship with the Creator of Christ. It is the personal experience. And I have yet to hear a teacher, a spiritual or a religious, any of them, talk about that, right? Whoever denies the Son, the same has not the Creator. He that acknowledges the Son has the Father also. But again, if you just say, oh yes, God is my Father. Oh yes, I follow the Son. I follow Christ. You're just saying those words. But what are you doing behind the scenes? How is that implied into your life? Are you walking the way of Christ? Are you learning? Are you growing? Um, are you fixing your mistakes in your life? Are you maturing in your life is key. You are judging yourself. You go to court with the Creator and Christ every night. And before you go to bed, that's when you go into court. And you talk with the Creator and you talk with Christ or the angels. And you have a court case to see how you did for that day. Deep stuff. People don't think about that. Because your religious teachers and leaders don't teach you these things. They don't. Um, let's see here. Let that therefore abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. Again, this goes back to the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If that which ye... if if that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you also shall continue within the Christ and in the Father. But the Son can also be a representation of the Spirit. And in the Father is creation. Right? So remember, every time it says the beginning, remember the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The tree of knowledge of good and evil is this realm is the ways of the world. You want to be part of the tree of life. Beautiful stuff. Um, and this is the promise that he has promised us. Even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them. Concerning those that seduce you. And seducing is a lot of things. From from. Uh, the tingling of an ear um, to entertainment on the on stage, right? They're seducing you. They're putting you in a trance, and they're not telling you about this stuff. But the anointing which ye have received of Him abides in you, right? And you need not that any person teach you again it says right here and you need not that any person teach you but as the same anointing teaches you of all things Christ's anointing will teach you these things and is truth and is no lie and even at it as it has taught you you shall abide in creation I only go to the Father. That's Christ's words. I only go to the Father. I don't listen to no spiritual or religious leader or teachers. I go and ask the Creator personally. Personally. And now little children abide in Christ. That when when you shall when Christ shall appear we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If ye know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that does righteousness is born of him. Those who are not lawless, those who have good morals, is righteousness, right? Um... But one of the key things is to realize when uh, it says here, when he shall appear, you may have confidence. So this is the personal encounter, right? You always hear testimonies of, oh, Christ came to me in a dream. I am coming. Christ did this and that. Well, 
it's because it's that personal encounter. Christ is coming to you, right? A spirit's coming to you. It's trying to show you something that makes sense to you, uh, to help you in life, to guide you, right? Your personal encounter is key to you, to you, because you're important. Little children are important. This is a message to children that are coming to this world. Don't be deceived by this world. And young adults, it's our job to train these children to not be part of the ways of the world. This is huge stuff. I hope you guys are taking notes. <laughs> um, let's see. Today we live in a realm of false gods and false history. There is very few teachers that guide you into the teachings of love, honor, and respect. Churches want to put on an entertaining show to prove the supernatural and proof of Christ and God's power. Sadly, all they are doing is promoting lower-level spirits, people infested with parasites and worms, and are hiring actors to perform on stage. The love and purity of Christ's love and commandments are lost in this disgraceful display of entertainment and deceiving the spiritually blind. How do you discover the deity Christ? Again, this goes into the personal exploration, right? Prayer, meditation, eating right, um, taking care of yourself, uh, going into court every night, talking with the Creator, right? Talking with the with Christ or angels, deity, right? Um, it you have to explore into it. You need to be judging yourself every night, right? Judge yourself. What did you learn today? What can you improve on in your life? You know, what does that look like um, every night? And then when you wake up in the morning, you feel refreshed and you begin to learn something new and different. This gets interesting because this is the cause of the Great Divide. To make it simple and to the point, the Great Divide is the Bible is the guidebook until Christ returns. Right? That's, a, that's what these religious teachers will tell you. The Bible is the guidebook until Christ returns. You cannot talk to Christ, but only the Holy Spirit, a nameless deity, will give you instructions. Right? You know, that's the religious term that they'll tell you is that, oh, no, you only listen to the Holy Spirit. Oh, this deity's name was, oh, and well, then that must be a demon, right? It has to be the Holy Spirit. So they, they downgrade your personal experience um, because you're not fitting their narrative. If you have supernatural encounters, you're labeled deceased, deceived and possessed. Again, you can't share in a religious environment. You cannot share your personal encounters. And this is huge because it not only goes into religion, it also goes into spiritual groups. And this also goes into the work environment. Um, they don't want you to express your views of things. Because it's not part of the, the business that is being presented. Right? Because it's part of the ways of the world. There's an order in the ways of the world. But when you have personal encounters. Right? Um, and experiences or... Uh, ideas that may be outside their curriculum uh, things get different uh, there's a lot of uh, disconnect there in the religious communities your personal encounters don't matter the majority of religious teachers and leaders only care about is routine funding and blind followers Again, the majority of religious teachers and leaders only care about is routine, means traditional routines, funding, and blind followers. Um, and that's pretty much it. So, with that being said, as you get to see my turtle background there, <laughs> um, this is some huge stuff. This is some legit, honest stuff um, that anybody should be 
implementing into their lives, uh, implying it into their life, um, exploring into their life, right? Um, so many people are trying to fit in uh, when they have spiritual encounters and they discover God or they discover Christ and that they, they feel they have to go to a church to continue those explorations of Christ and God. But when they enter the church's door, the religious doors, uh, they're met with selectiveness, judgmental state of, like I said, you know, routine, uh, funding, and making sure that their followers are followers and not becoming leaders for themselves, right? Because it takes away their mantle of being a leader up there, right? And we're seeing that today, right? You got to realize these religious leaders and teachers are teaching teenagers. They're teaching children. And as I stated on there, right, are they teaching them the tree of life or are they teaching them the knowledge of good and evil of the ways of the world, which is what they're doing. They're doing this today. They're entertaining you. Um, they're promoting evil spirits, right? They're promoting lower level entities. Uh, they're wanting to showcase uh, deities within people so then they can show proof of the uh, of the beauty of Christ entering your body. They're trying to show show you through entertainment values of that and it's it's the personal experience, right? You don't need to have entertainment to show you the love of Christ. You don't. You have that in your personal time, in your sacred place, when you're praying, when you're meditating. That's where you're going to encounter God. That's where you're going to encounter Christ. That's where you're going to encounter angels, right? And that's that's what it says in the Bible. People are looking for signs and wonders in the heavens but they shall never find it they shall never find it no matter where you walk in this realm you will not find the personal counters however however nature will teach you right so this is where it gets deeper because if you go around the world looking for leaders and teachers humans right um, you're gonna learn the knowledge of good and evil but if you go out to nature, the tree of life, you watch the animals and how they how they just understand things instinctively. They know things, right? Um, they know where to find water. They know where to find food. They know where where to find shelter when winter's coming, and when it's hot outside, they know where to go find shelter to stay cool right you know that's finding the trust and the balance within you discovering Christ within you discovering the kingdom of heaven within you discovering your guides within you right building that tree of life within you um, and learning about life as well so this is a very deep video I'm gonna go ahead and end it since it's already at 33 minutes so hopefully you guys stuck with me to the end took some notes um, a lot of deep stuff here a lot of deep stuff so hopefully you pray and meditate on this stuff um, practice this in your life daily um, again that was uh, what was it again first uh, John 2 is what we read and uh, revisit that scripture because that's very very beautiful uh, note to children that are coming into this world and a note to young parents that are bringing these children into the world to not allow them to be a part of the world but teach them the tree of life right it's huge so i could keep talking forever so love yourself keep shining bright i'll talk to you later